if you want to succeed in any industry, then you need a map. So for example, you want to go from Bengaluru to Chennai or anywhere in the country, you need a map, right? Google map, so that it will show you the path. So this video is going to serve as a career map for you right from the plus two level to the PhD postdoc level for anybody who wants to get into the BT industry, that is a biotech industry, globally, anywhere in the world, this career map video is going to help you. Now, to start with, we all have core subjects, right? So core subjects we have and that is basically biology is divided into broadly botany and zoology. Now to have a basic understanding of what is biotechnology, you can look at fermentation wherein the milk converts to curd. That is the simplest myth example of biotechnology. So you apply technology into existing biology to change the form or change the format or to make it, make it something usable for the market. That's what biotechnology more or less is. So they teach you this in your 10 plus 2 level or the pre-university level. But now the question is, when you want to get started beyond this, you want to go into the biotech industry, what do you need? Now, obviously, you will start your college with a bachelor's degree. So we call it as BSc or BTech in India. It can be different for you in different uh, countries. It can be BS, that is Bachelor of Science. Now, more or less, all these are the same. There's no difference. Now, the question is, what should you choose? Now, generally, BTech or they call it as uh, BE, that is Bachelor of Engineering or Bachelor of Technology in Biotech, is different than BSc in Biotech. So, what is the difference? I've already made a video. You can check it out. Just to summarize quickly, if you do a BTech, then obviously you are on the engineering side of biotech, so you are in, you can get absorbed into the industry faster, while BSc takes you towards the research side of biotechnology. So after BSc, you do MSc or MS in US or anywhere in the world, so then it will be MSc or MS. After BTech, generally you do ME or MTech. So this is generally the degrees you do. But degrees are not worth it if you are not able to apply it into the industry. So you have to keep in mind. Now the real map starts after you have done the basic degree, which is bachelor's or master's, whatever you have done. So from here now, we will start with our video, which is the career map. Let's get started. So now we will divide the biotech industry or rather I would say the biotech sector, not really industry. So I think I should call it as a biotech sector. Okay. So, biotech sector, we can divide it into three parts. Now, what are those three parts? We will look at that now. The first will be academia. So, academia is basically from where you are coming. That is, professors or postdoctoral researchers. So, what they do? They do research at the same time they do teaching. Now, the second one which we have is called as the industry. So, what is an industry? Industry is where they create products out of the research which they have done or they have bought the research of somebody and they are creating product or services out of it and selling it to the world. So, for example, we have a company which is selling dosa batter. So, what it is, it is taking the rice, converting it into dosa batter. Now, that product it is selling to the market. Or if we have somebody who is, you know, uh, going ahead and creating drugs or medicine out of raw material. So, that is the industry. So, what they do, they will create product or they will have services. Now, what kind of services? Now, suppose uh, there is uh, some kind of microbiological testing to be done, some validation to be done, or some product was created whose testing has to be done now that becomes a service, right? Or there can be multiple types of services. It can be a wet lab or dry lab. We'll come to that. So, basically, the industry can be now divided into two parts, okay? So, one is called as dry lab and one is called as wet lab. Now, wet lab was the only thing which was there 20 or 25 years ago. So, this is highly crowded market, but at the same time, you require molecular biology skills, biochemistry skills, molecular bi microbiology skills to be in the wet lab. Okay. 
And wet lab means you have to be there in the lab, you have to work and you have to do. So now in wet lab also two types of jobs you can get. One can be the discovery jobs. Okay. Like you're doing something which has never been done. Or one can be something where you get into the process. So it can be bio process job. Okay. So this is how the wet lab is. Now coming to the dry lab. Now dry lab was not existent 30 years ago or 35 years ago. It was not there. This has come new. So the competition is not very high here. Competition is less. But now dry lab has got more or less three parts. Okay. So you do have um, the data analysis. Right. So whatever data is generated in the wet lab. You are doing the analysis of that and then you are sending the feedback to the scientists that, okay, this is what we found. Okay, let's say, for example, you have uh, done, you've got the data of spearmint leaves and you have now analyzed that and now you found out that uh, spearmint leaves are good for PCOD. So, you send that information to the wet lab so that they, now, they can now create a product out of this. Now, dry lab, one type of job is data analysis. What are the other type of job? Other type of job could be Drug discovery. So basically what is done in the wet lab, you don't do in the wet lab, you do in the dry lab itself. So that is like we straight away take away this. So now what we are trying to do is we are trying to rule out the wet lab part and we are trying to do the wet lab part in the dry lab itself. So that is where something like drug discovery can come into picture. Now the next thing which comes into picture in dry lab, we call it as extrapolation. So what is extrapolation? Extrapolation is like we already have the data, we try to use machine learning or artificial intelligence to predict what may happen, okay, or what can be the possible outcome. So that is exploration, extrapolation, okay. So that is one dry lab job. So this is the kind of jobs you can get in the dry lab in the industry. Wet lab, you can get analysis job, research assistant job, scientist job. I have already created a biotech career ladder here for the wet lab. So now dry lab we have seen, wet lab we have seen, coming to the third type of job you can get, we call them as enablers. So they enable the industry. So basically they enable the industry, they make it happen, right? So there are two types of enablers in our country or anywhere in the world. We call them either the government employees or people who work in the government for the biotech sector. In India, we call it as Department of Biotechnology. You have um, uh, the BIRAC and uh, you have DST, so you work in the government. Or you become an entrepreneur and you start your own company where all of this happens. So you create a company out of it. So basically, this is how the biotech sector career map looks like. So now we are into the entrepreneurship. So you are starting a company. And the, now this comes a little later. Now, you, what can you do after a BSc or B.Tech? If you have done B.Tech, you can get into the industry straight away or you can become, you can go into the wet lab or dry lab. So if you want to go into dry lab, you need to learn bioinformatics and AI ML. Now, if you want to get into a wet lab, you can always do a regular biotech degree. But I will always suggest that this should come only in the master's. In, if you are doing a bachelor's, please do a regular B.Tech Biotech or B.E. Biotech. Please don't go for a bioinformatics in the bachelor's itself because in master's anyways, you can do it. So basically, we want um, someone who has the knowledge of wet lab and knows the dry lab. That is always better. Now coming to those who do B.Sc., they go for M.Sc. And then what they do, they go for Ph.D. And after Ph.D., they enter the industry as a scientist. So what they do, like I said, product or services, they do the discovery part. So this part, the PhD people will do. So this is the pathway they follow. After MSc also, you can get absorbed into the bioprocess. But after BSc, getting a job in bioprocess is going to be tough. However, I do know some companies which do, does. So either you should have a BTEC or a MSc to get into the wet lab or dry lab. So this is how the entire sector looks like. Now coming to the fact that if you are in a company where you want to grow, what is the career trajectory? So basically, the career is very sensitive with the degree. If you have a B.Tech, side by side, try for an M.Tech or if you can't have do an M.Tech, gain as much experience and skills so that the company you know, keeps giving you promotions. So as you progress in your career, you will see that in the next 10 years, 15 years, the salary grows like anything. It can go up to 2 crores, 4 crores also. As a manager in a company, I know uh, one of the professional earns around 2 crores per annum. So there is 
scope here. Now, why do you see all that negativity on the internet about the sector is because when people are struggling to get a job as a fresher, they don't know what to do. So they will go and write all that negative comments. But after, say, you, you they get placed, they never go back and delete those comments, right? So the comments remain. So, the, you know, basically, uh, internet is a dustbin where every, anybody can post whatever. So if you are looking at that and making your opinion, that's how you make wrong decisions. So this is the pathway you have to follow. And any questions you have, put it down in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Keep shining. Take care. Bye.